If you've recently taken these courses in undergrad, your content review is going to be just that, a review. Are you an auditory, visual, kinesthetic, or maybe a reading and writing learner? There are two top tier, S rank, cream of the crop, paid resources high scorers unanimously recommend. Hey pre-meds, I'm Emery the Memory Cat. Today, let's talk about picking the best MCAT resources for you. Listen, there's no one right way to 528. Everyone's path is different. Your goal is to find the best recipe of resources and study techniques given your time frame and budget. And there are a bunch of resources out there. Picking the best ones to invest your money and time and money can be more overwhelming than my 1 a.m. Zoomies. <laughs> I'm gonna talk through the four things you should consider when picking resources. Then I'll talk about the most popular resources and the unique advantages and disadvantages they each bring to the table. Before we dive in, there are four major considerations to help narrow down your choices. How long do you have? How far do you have to go? How do you learn best? And how much are you able to spend? The answer to the question, how long do you have, should be pretty obvious. If you've already signed up for a test date, you know your deadline and you probably decided on a rough schedule. Most people take three or four months to study for the MCAT, and one to two is the golden ratio of content review to practice exams. Although, if you're on an abbreviated timeline, like a month, you might want to skip straight to the QBanks and practice tests. On to the second question. How far do you have to go? Consider how much you have to learn. Are you a pre-med undergrad? Or are you coming from a less traditional major? If you've recently taken these courses in undergrad, your content review is going to be just that, a review. But if you haven't studied some of these science topics in a while, you might be a prime candidate for something like a post back program, one of the time and cash intensive tutoring courses from places like Blueprint or Princeton Review, or one of the content review resources out there, like Sketchy. Next, how do you learn the best? Are you an auditory, visual, kinesthetic, or maybe a reading and writing learner? If you don't know, I strongly recommend doing a YouTube deep dive on the subject and then figuring out what works for you. Certain resources, like the Kaplan MCAT content review books, are better fits for certain learning styles, namely reading and writing or kinesthetic, as long as you don't mind walking on a treadmill while reading about ethyl groups. If you're a visual or auditory learner, Sketchy's video lessons are probably a better fit for you. Actually, you could totally watch Sketchy videos about ethyl groups on a treadmill as well, so kinesthetic learners really just have to worry about their treadmill budget. Which brings us to the final question. How much are you able to spend? It's really easy to spend thousands of dollars on prep materials and courses. But if you're trying to be frugal about it, prioritize the resources with the highest efficacy for you based on your answers to the previous questions. And then supplement with the free stuff. More on that free stuff later. Okay, it's time to move on to the nitty gritty. There are three main types of paid resources, ones that help with content review, question banks and practice exams, and lastly, comprehensive tutoring courses. Keep in mind, there's probably some crossover with these, and a lot of content review brands also offer packages with QBanks and practice exams. Kaplan has a series of MCAT content review books that are essentially like playing MCAT study in classic mode. They're dry, but reliable. A standby, the vanilla ice cream of content review materials. If you're good at motivating yourself and keeping to a schedule, Using these in conjunction with Anki and the AAMC exam package could be all you need. Also, a lot of people find these books at used bookstores, on eBay, or Facebook Marketplace, so you might be able to save a few bucks if you don't mind someone else's highlights. The two most popular MCAT Anki decks, Jack Sparrow and Mile Down, are based on the Kaplan books, so they're a solid supplement. Sketchy's MCAT course provides content review, and you can even package it with the AAMC test materials and our QBank for about what you'd spend on a set of Kaplan books and the AAMC test materials. The unique thing about Sketchy is it's video and animation based, so if you're an auditory or visual learner, it'll probably feel a lot more manageable than the Kaplan books. We also have a great car strategy section that won't bore you to tears. And we even have our own Anki decks. Speaking of cars, 
While it isn't exactly content review, Jack Weston is known for their daily cars practice as well as their cars strategy course. If you're a STEM student struggling with that section, this is a solid place to turn to if you have the scratch. I'm a cat, so scratching has never been a problem for me though. While Jack Weston does offer a comprehensive MCAT course that includes lectures, a QBank, and practice exams, people really rave about Jack Weston's ability to boost your car score. When it comes to QBanks and practice exams, the two main contenders are UWorld and the AAMC. Most people consider the AAMC practice tests a necessity. Don't forget, the AAMC offers financial assistance for those resources. We put a link to this program in the description. If you plan on taking a lot of practice exams and running through questions every day for a few months, the AAMC resources might not stretch all the way. And UWorld's huge library of practice questions is great for that kind of intensive practice. Next Step and Altius also offer QBanks and practice exams. Next Step is known for questions that are even tougher than those on the MCAT, and some people like to build their confidence by trying to crush the MCAT on hard mode. Finally, there's the most expensive, but also the most comprehensive option. Tutoring programs and MCAT prep classes like Princeton Review or Blueprint will take you the whole way with lectures, tutoring, and practice, practice, practice. If you thrive in the structure of a classroom setting, or maybe you have a lot of ground to make up quickly, this might be worth the splurge. Now, before we get to the free stuff, there are two top tier S rank cream of the crop paid resources high scorers unanimously recommend, Anki and the AAMC QBank and practice exams. The best value resource without a doubt is Anki. It's free on your computer and it's only 25 bucks for the iOS app. It's a spaced repetition-based flashcard program to reinforce all the cramming you've done. And since you can make your own cards, it can even help you review mistakes you made on practice questions and exams, which you should be doing by the way. Every missed QBank question should become a new Anki card for you. There are tons of free Anki decks out there, like Jack Sparrow or Mile Down, which MCAT 1 percenters will swear by. The other key resource to plan around are the AAMC practice exams. They are the best way for you to get better at the most important skill for taking the MCAT, actually taking the MCAT. And let me reiterate a thing I just said a minute ago. The best thing you can do for your score is reviewing your practice exams with a fine tooth comb or brush. Oh, God, I love a brush. My creators at Sketchy probably won't be happy I said this, but if you're thrifty and clever and have the time to scour Reddit and Discord and YouTube, you can totally string together enough free resources to make a comprehensive study system. You just gotta invest the time to save yourself the money. Speaking of free though, you should always try before you buy. And Sketchy has a one week free trial, so you should at least exploit that as much as you can. But seriously, if you compare Sketchy to some of the other resources out there, your dollar will go a long way. You get access to a high yield, fun, and evidence-based learning system for your content review, as well as the AAMC QBank, practice exams, and supplemental Anki decks. And not to brag, but basically everyone in med school uses Sketchy. So why not start now? Well, that's about it. Good luck in your studies and follow us for more pre-med and med school tips. Leave any recommendations or nice comments below. Any mean comments you can mail to me at the PO box in the description. I'm running out of stuff to fill my litter box.